What's good guys, my name's Sam Hall. In the last four years, I ran Barstool Syracuse. I also started an NIL agency, and now I'm excited to bring you guys the first content studio in Syracuse, The Space. As you can see, we've got a nice little room right here. Kick back, watch some TV. We've got a little conference table, some of the guys hard at work. And then over here, <laughs> we have our podcast studio. And listen, we thought it would be cool to bring on some of Syracuse's most influential people, talk about Syracuse. Um, so welcome to the show. All right, welcome to the first episode of the No Destination Podcast. We are here today in the Space Syracuse, our studio right on campus on Marshall Street. Um, we've got a very special guest joining us. The new Syracuse quarterback, Kyle McCord. Kyle, thanks for coming on. I yes, appreciate sir. it. Of course. Appreciate having me. Um, first question before we even get started, I want to know just because I feel like I've been talking to a lot of people around Syracuse just about you getting here. And yeah. it feels like some people don't even know that you're on campus yet. So what day did you actually pull up? When did you get to Cuse? It was the second week of January. So I think January 13th or 14th uh, and then moved in for a few days and then got right to class. And you've kind of, I feel like you kind of missed the snow. Like this winter is not. I mean, super people crazy. have been saying it was a mild winter, but I mean, it snowed like six, six inches, I, I think. <laughs> I feel like everyone hypes up. I mean, I've been here, so I just graduated. I was here yeah. for four years. Everyone hypes up the snow. And like, granted, my freshman, sophomore year, we got like probably five, six feet, and it was legit the last couple yeah. years. I don't know if it's like global warming stuff or whatever, but, <laughs> but it, I mean, <laughs> like this winter, we got nothing. And yeah. so I don't know. It's definitely a cold place. Um, but it's good you're here. What, what are you thinking about Q so far? Environment, people, culture, yeah. all that. I like it a lot. Um, I've been telling people it's the perfect mix between having enough to do, uh, but not like being in the middle of a huge city where it's overwhelming. Um, so just find the right spots to be. And uh, I love the people. So yeah, I'm super happy so far. One thing I always say about Q so much special is that like Sy we were talking about this the other day. I think Syracuse University is the city of Syracuse. 100%, so yeah. in terms of like, carving out your own path, building your brands, that kind of stuff. There's not a lot outside of the school, but Syracuse in itself and upstate yep. New York is a pretty big region. So I think like, obviously I ran Barstool the last couple of years. So being able to build that page, I saw that. Now you're here, you've got a pretty solid Instagram following. I know like you're going to be a hit in the community, yeah. which is a big part of why we're doing this show. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I'm excited for you to kind of start to work yourself into the community and interact yeah. with people. Um, I know spring football started. Um, what's the vibe been at camp so far? New coach, yep. new program, kind yep. of. What's yep. that been like? It's been awesome. It's been super competitive. Um, and I think that's what you want in the spring, uh, especially with a new coach. A lot of uh, what we're doing right now is just competing, um, you know, playing 11 on 11. And I think the biggest thing right now is just getting everybody on the same page too. Um, bringing in a lot of new pieces uh, from the transfer portal, bringing guys back, uh, new coaches on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Um, so getting everybody on, on the same page and getting this thing rolling. I love it. Um, all right, we're gonna take it back now to your playing days before college, I guess. So I was, I did my research this morning. <laughs> I looked, I looked up some notes, yeah. read around a little bit. I saw you were the third, I think the third ranked quarterback. Um, going to college, yep. balled out in high school. I also saw you and Marv were teammates in high school. We were. Did that play in play a role <laughs> in that commitment to Ohio State? What was that yeah. dynamic like? And also just like, I guess your recruitment in general mm -hmm. in high school. I saw you committed early, but what was yeah. that process like? Did Marv play a role? Mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear. Yeah, so he he actually went to our rival high school our freshman year. So I went to Sancho's Prep in Philly and he went to LaSalle. Um, and so my first impression of Marvin, we were actually playing LaSalle. I wasn't the starter, um, and, but he started. And so they were going down about to score and their quarterback threw an interception or safety, picked it off and he's run down the field and everybody in the sideline is celebrating pick six. DK and he, he, DK, yeah, this, it was like, like the exact same play. And Marvin from the other side of the field just hawked him down. And we were like, geez, like who is that dude? Yeah. Um, so fast forward, he transfers. Uh, to Sancho's prep for our sophomore year. And uh, we laid it out right away, had a great first year together. And so we always talked about playing together, uh, but you know, you don't know how reasonable that is. I mean, obviously I would make the decision that was best for me and he would do the same. Um, so went on a few visits, kind of went around whatever and Ohio State recruited me pretty heavily early on. And then um, in the spring of my sophomore year, going into my junior season, uh, they wanted me to commit, so I did. 
and they were recruiting Marv as well, but he he took the process a little slower. And then I think it was like six months after I committed, he committed. Um, so it was just funny how it worked out and, you know, playing with him for three years in high school is a cheat code. Um, yeah, it was a cheat code. I mean, even so, in college, though. Yeah, even in college. Yes. Yeah, so you can imagine what it was like in high school. I mean, little five, eight corners lined up on Marvin. So yeah, what's, fun. what is what's high school recruitment like? Like I I'd played sports, but I'd never. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I like to say I was a younger athlete. Like mm -hmm. Middle school, I was good. High school, I was yeah. done. What is it like to be in high school getting actively recruited mm -hmm. by these big schools? it's it's ridiculous i got my first offer in eighth grade and like before i i haven't even graduated middle school yet and i got my first offer from central michigan and looking back on it now like it was cool when it happened but looking back on it now it's like ridiculous like you're a college Does that go coach through you or your parents or like i was at a camp and the coach came up and um he was like i know it's early and you know i can tell you're gonna be special he's like but i'm gonna offer you and i was like offer offer like me what like yeah kid. i, I yeah. didn't really even know what an offer was at the time to be honest um but i mean it, it's just getting sped up and sped up and um for me the process was fun because obviously i was heavily recruited um you know going to different schools and seeing you know all the, the top of the top you know and, and talking to the coaches and sitting in that office it was sweet but um, at the same time, it can be stressful because, you know, that's an extremely big decision you have to make at 16, 17 years old. That's going to impact the rest of your life. Um, but, you know, it is a crazy process. Yeah. Um, so then I guess going off that, went through high school, went to Ohio State. Pretty sure when you walked in there, you walked into a quarterback room. Loaded. Loaded. Yeah. CJ, mm -hmm. I think Quinn was in there. Quinn yours, yeah. What was that like walking into just a yeah. quarterback room of mm -hmm. talent? No, it was... Looking back on it now, like I, when you're in the moment, you don't realize how crazy that is. Uh, but it was nuts um, having having that much talent in one room. Uh, it was fun because every single day you had to bring it, and you know we were competing with each other. And that was uh, the year following Justin Fields, who went on to be first round pick. And so um, it was an open competition walking in there my freshman year. And so just competing against those guys was fun. And, you know, it's funny in the moment you're, you're thinking, you know, I have to beat this dude every single rep in practice. And, you know, I, I hope I go out and ball. And then fast forward now, we're, we're all super tight and we still talk to each other. So I, I think that's just the, um, you know, what a, a college quarterback room is. You know, th those guys push you every day and you end up being super tight with them. And so your sophomore year was the year CJ like balled out. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then junior year, which is this past season, yeah. you kind of took over. Mm -hmm. How was that kind of stepping into that role yeah. of starting quarterback at Ohio State? Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It was a, a big challenge, obviously, uh, replacing in a guy like CJ and, and his caliber. Um, but I, I felt like what I went through the first two years learning behind him helped me a lot. Um, just understanding everything that comes with it. Because um, playing quarterback at Ohio State, uh, it's a big responsibility <laughs> on and off the field and that so fan base does yeah, not joke so around seeing seeing what he went through um you know kind of prepared me for that and uh, it was fun it, it was a great experience and you know i wouldn't trade the the way everything went for the world I, I feel like everything happened for a reason uh for me to go there and you know i felt like i played pretty well but obviously um you know one thing led to another and i ended up here at, a, at another great situation what so i when i was looking at colleges it came down to syracuse and ohio state mm -hmm. for me and I liked Ohio State a lot. I also felt like it was massive. Yeah. Syracuse is big. I think there's like 15, 20,000 students yeah. here, but it's controlled mm -hmm. and it's smaller and like yeah. word spreads. And I I just remember walking onto that campus, walking from one side to the other side, taking forever. <laughs> what What's it like? What's that? It's in Columbus. What's yep. that city culture community? What's all that like out there? I mean, not even Columbus. The whole state of Ohio revolves around the Buckeyes. And I've been at Syracuse for three months now, and I know the campus pretty well. I was at Ohio State for three years, and I still, like, the campus was huge. Like, I didn't exactly know how to get from, you know, one place to another. Um, but it, it really is like a religion. You know, there's people out there, like, everything that they do revolves around the Buckeyes. And um, it was awesome. It was, it was a really fun experience. Um, you know, those fans are diehard. Uh, but coming here, I mean, just meeting some of the people in the community, it's, it's kind of the same way. I mean, they're, they're super hungry for, you know, a winning team. And everywhere I've been, you know, where I'm meeting the fans and talking to them, like, we're so excited. You know, this is exactly what we've been waiting for. Um, so uh, I'm excited to, to see what, what the Dome's going to look like once we get that place rocking. I've, I know we've talked about this, but I spend, as a social media guy, I spend a lot of time on, mm -hmm. on social media yeah. and Twitter, like Syracuse 
Twitter, especially for football and basketball too, the last couple of years has been a very negative place. <laughs> and I think yeah. when Fran came, obviously you coming and like mm -hmm. some of the guys that yeah. followed, like it's the most exciting I've seen it yeah. since I've been a Syracuse fan, which yeah. has been cool. Um, all right, so we'll jump now. So Ohio State, season ends, 11 and one. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna say November 25th was last game against Michigan. Yeah. Um, I want to say like 10 days later, November 4th, you entered the portal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those 10 days, like what, ha what, what was the mindset? What happened? And then I guess what ultimately led you to yeah. the decision to enter the portal? Yeah. So, uh, we, we lost the game and we we're kind of in the same situation. We were the year before we went 11 and one, uh, lost the last game of the year. And I think both years it was the number two versus number three, uh, teams in the country. And so, the previous year we lost um, and then got some help. Um, I think it was Utah beating USC ended up freeing up that number four seed and we got into the playoff. And so we were kind of in a similar spot this year where you know we needed some things to happen. Um, I think we needed Florida State to lose or something like that to get in. Um, so that whole week you're, you're kind of practicing and you know, you're not sure exactly how it's gonna play out. Um, and so Florida State, uh, ultimately ended up winning. They didn't even get in. I mean, it was packed at that, that last spot. Um, so we didn't get into the playoff and then, um, you know, we started having, you know, quickly conversations of, you know, what the future was going to look like. And that's just the reality of college football now is everything moves so fast, uh, with the transfer portal window opening right after the season. Um, and so they thought they should move in one way. And, you know, I accordingly thought, you know, I should move in another, uh, and that's just the reality. It's the business. Um, and so, kind of on short notice, didn't know where I was going to be uh, when I put my name in the portal and, you know, just kind of to, um, you know, see what was going to happen. And some guys get in the portal, they know where they're going. That wasn't the case for me. I really had no idea. Yeah. But it sounds like, I mean, I just, I think about the portal and I think there are a lot of good things that come from it, but at the same time, there's a lot of not so good things. Yeah. And I think a big part of that is like guys thinking that they can just jump in and go get paid to go somewhere and they're mm -hmm. going to get an opportunity when like, Realistically, for a lot of people, that happens, especially if you're mm -hmm. if you're a quarterback, if yeah. you're um, playing one of those skill positions. But for a lot of guys, like I just see people jumping around, and at times I'm kind of like, "What is? Yeah. What's even happening here?" Um, but so, anyways, entered the portal, and then you started talking to teams, mm -hmm. and so I want to know what that was about. Obviously, you ended up coming here. Yeah. Um, so right after you entered, was phone blowing up. What was going on? It was nuts. So. Keep in mind, like we talked about, I didn't really get a huge high school recruitment because I committed pretty early. I didn't go on any official visits or anything like that. Um, so you, I put my name into the portal website at midnight, right when it opened. Um, and so I went to bed not thinking like anybody would know until I posted it on my social media. And I wake up, I roll over, it's like six in the morning, my phone is blowing up. And I'm like, there's no way. And so I, I quickly wake up, um, I put it on my uh, social media and my phone is blowing up, you know, people hitting me up, coaches, whatever. Uh, but it was nuts. And so Coach Fran, um, he called me around noon on that Monday, like right after I posted it. And he was like, are you in Columbus? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, cool. I'm going to come see you later. And I was like, all right, sounds good. Like I thought he was... Um, in Ohio, just like recruiting and just happened to be there. Is this before he became the head coach here? Or no, this, this is after. after. Okay. This is after. Um, and so I'm thinking he's in Ohio recruiting whatever and just happens to be in the area. And so he texts me in the afternoon. He's like, I should be landing uh, like at eight o'clock. He was like, I'll come see you. And I was like, what do you what do you mean? <laughs> like, you're not here? And he's like, oh, no, like I'm in Syracuse, but I'm going to fly out tonight to see you. And so he came out uh, with Coach Nunn's the quarterback mm -hmm. coach. Um, got to my apartment and, you know, we chopped it up for, you know, two, three hours. And so he, he got in the plane that night and flew out and came and saw me and then got in the plane and flew right back to Syracuse. And from that moment on, they were kind of number one on my list, uh, regardless of what happened. You've known him for a while, right? Yeah. Since sixth grade, he used to come to my youth football games. What? Did he <laughs> just come and watch? He was yeah. a coach or what was the So was the deal? it's funny. So on that youth football team, um, we had me, Deuce Chestnut, who's on the team, uh, Dennis Jacquez, who's also on the team. And there was a bunch of other local kids like Fidel Diggs, who just transferred in, um, Elijah Clark, another guy who, who coach yeah. Fran was, was super tight with. Um, so it's crazy. Like, uh, he was at temple at the time and we were like, you know, what's this dude doing? Like, there's no way, like whatever. And, but he was always cool. I mean, we, we talked to him and whatnot. Um, 
And then just to see kind of the way everything worked itself out, a bunch of those guys on that team, uh, youth football team now in Syracuse is pretty sweet. It's crazy. I think one of the things that's just underrated, I saw a clip of Deuce talking about this the other day about yeah. him coming from LSU and how big reason of it is that like a lot of, I mean, one, being familiar with the mm -hmm. coaching staff, but yeah. two, like a lot of these guys, him and you have been playing mm -hmm. with since yeah. you grew up. What's that like culture wise in mm -hmm. the locker room, I guess? Like is having that familiarity and knowing each other coming in yeah is, is it a stronger bond are there people that feel left out because mm -hmm. of it like what what does that look like yeah. in the locker room no i think it's definitely a stronger bond uh, and for me it made my transition super easy uh when you walk into a locker room and there's you know 10 guys that you played with and other guys that you knew because of recruiting growing up so it just made that transition even easier and then like we we're talking about i've known coach france since i was in sixth grade um coach nuns the quarterback coach was the head coach at burden catholic high school and wanted me to come up and play for him um, when I was in middle school. And so obviously I went to St. Joe's Prep, but we stayed in contact. And then Coach Nixon coached on the Eagles and lived in my town um, when I was in uh, first grade. And so his son is my age as well. So we played youth football together. Uh, and I was the quarterback. He was the running back for like four years. So I, Coach Nixon, before I knew him as a football coach, he was, you know, Will's dad, my friend. Um, so it's just crazy just to see how everything kind of came together perfectly. Yeah. So now you're here. Um, you're taking classes, right? Yeah. Um, online or in person? Mostly in person. Yeah. You're mostly in person. Is that, is that different from Ohio State? <laughs> yeah. Ohio State, uh, a lot was online. Um, so, I mean, but the in-person classes here, they're interesting. Uh, so I don't mind going to them. And uh, I'm in class with a few of my boys, too. So it's not too bad. It's also probably easier when you're not walking like five miles across campus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, just got some news that Eddie Lampkin just transferred to Syracuse. I uh, got to throw that out there. Anyways, <laughs> back to the interview. Um, so you're back at Cuse or you're here at Cuse. Yep. Um, what's day to day look like for you? I know you're busy with spring ball classes. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff. What school are you in here? CRS. Yeah. Do you yeah. like that? It's cool. Yeah, I don't mind writing, so I, I hate math. I don't even where where is that building on campus? Uh, like CRS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's where you got me. Yeah. That's where you CRS. Got me. I don't know. I have no idea either. I I st I was Newhouse Woodman, so I stayed I stayed down on this. Yeah, side you're of trying to just drop your new house. Pretty much. Let's see how it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always got to Newhouse Mafia, you know. Um, but yeah, day to day for you. Um, yeah. Busy spring ball classes, all that. What's it look like mm -hmm. from the morning to the night? Yeah, so we practice on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, um, and then the lift and film days are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Sunday is the off day. So a normal practice day, um, getting to the facility around six forty-five, seven. Um, we'll have a quick team meeting at seven thirty, and then you're on the field around eight, and then practice will go until about ten thirty. Um, and then quick turnaround, shower, eat, and get out to class. Uh, until about two or so, two thirty, um, and then uh, get a quick massage, and then we got meetings, watching uh, the film from practice that morning, and then sometimes we'll have a team meeting or whatever, a walkthrough um, afterward, and then we all eat dinner together uh, around six. Are they are they cooking up good food for you? They're feeding us well. Yeah. They're feeding us well, um, and then uh, back to the apartment for homework and chilling for the rest of the yeah. night. Um, I got a question for you because the other day I was talking to Dan Villari. Mm -hmm. Have you been to varsity? Mm -mm. See, that's crazy. Dan said he hadn't been there either. We're going to, you know, what we're going to do. So we're going to get these guys and we're going to go in, and mic you up All right. first time you go in there. Cause All that's right. like Syracuse fixture. I walked in with Dan. Dan was like, yo, I've never been here. I'm like, dude, you've been here for three years. So you haven't <laughs> been to varsity. We're going to get you in there. All they right. do this cool thing after every football, basketball game, marching band walks down to varsity and inside they have like flags of all the different teams they play and when mm -hmm. we beat a team they flip it over Sweet. but it's like this big thing no right. one goes in there apparently so right. we're gonna we're gonna get I you like in it. there uh, it. show it out so spring game i think today is like uh, april 3rd mm -hmm. so it's coming up yeah. 4 20 mm -hmm. um nighttime make sure you go out support the guys yep. i know at that game they do a lot of cool stuff fans go on the field yeah autographs that type of stuff it's always a cool time uh What's the vibe going into it? Are you a lot of competition? Are, yeah. are people excited? And yeah, I guess I'm curious because I know it's like inner squad. So yeah. you're playing against each other. How were those teams decided? Or yeah. is, there, is there competition around it? What's that like? I think it will. I mean, knowing Fran, it's probably going to be competitive. And I'm not sure how they're doing the teams. I think we might draft them. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, I hope I get to. Yeah, where are you going in that draft? Yeah, I hope I'm the one drafting. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
maybe I can, you know, tap into my, my GM, uh, GM skills, but, uh, it'll definitely be competitive. Um, you know, the last day of spring guys trying to make that, that final impression. So it'll be good. And, um, seven thirty or seven o'clock kickoff, I think, uh, yeah. which is interesting for a spring game. So I think it'll be, be cool. I think there's two lacrosse games and like a concert leading up to it. Um, so it'll be a good time. Yeah. That concert. I'll be there for sure. I'm gonna make it out to the game after and <laughs> the game will be fun. I'm sure after that concert, um, I was going to ask, I, I meant to ask this earlier, but when you, you came here on a visit mm -hmm. before you committed, yep. right? What was that like? Was that the, on social media, the whole hibachi and the Lambos and all that? Was that yeah. when you came? Uh, so a funny story. So I, I scheduled my, uh, official for Thursday to Saturday. It was supposed to be like a two, three day visit. Um, so I get on the plane from Philly. So it's a short flight, 45 minutes. Um, so we're like 30 minutes into the flight and the pilot gets on, uh, the intercom and was like, yeah, we're heading back to Philly. Like something's wrong with the plane. Like, I forget what it was. And like, that's not exactly what you want to hear. Like, I hope you weren't on a Boeing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why can't we just land yeah. in Syracuse, whatever. Um, so I was on edge for like the next 30 minutes and then we land and, uh, coach France calling me like, yo, did you land? I was like, yeah, in, in Philly. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, it was a whole ordeal getting the, the travel, whatever. So we ended up driving up the next day. Um, and so more than anything, I just wanted to, to talk to the coaches. Um, you know, I think a lot of the Lambo and the, the whole hibachi thing in the dome was sweet, but I think that's for a lot of the, uh, yeah. the freshmen. Um, so I just wanted to sit down and talk ball and kind of see the campus. And so I had, I had a really good time, um, got to be around the team a little bit, um, you know, met some guys like OG and uh, Justin Barron, Dan, all them, got to talk to them. So it was sweet. And then I actually ended up going down to the bowl game uh, later that week. I was there too. Yeah, it was good. Was, the weather was good at least. Was, the weather was yeah. good. I thought you were about to say it was a good game. Yeah, I was, was good no, it was not a good game. I'm gonna tell the story too. I So I was at, um, I was at that bowl game. Mm -hmm. I was in Miami staying with one of my friends, went to the game. Um, it's obviously not a game to remember. Yep. I think it was like 45 nothing at the end of it. <laughs> not not good. Not Our deal. boy Dan gave it all he had, but <laughs> just it, it wasn't working that day. I I was staying at the team hotel. Mm -hmm. Um like not going to lie, I'm with a couple of the guys the team. It's late on night. We're trying to go out it's in Florida. Someone says that Fran's downstairs. And they can't walk out because if he sees him, like he doesn't want anyone going out. Yeah. And I think this is before he like really became the coach. He didn't coach the bowl game. I think mm -hmm. Nuns did, yeah. but he was there. And so I was like, okay, I'll go scout it out. I walked down, took the elevator down, walked down to the lobby, and I looked to my left, and Fran and I think his son mm -hmm. are both just asleep on the lobby couch. And I walk by and I see Fran's eye just one eye opens up. He sees it's me, not a player on the mm -hmm. team, goes right back to bed. <laughs> the second I saw that, I was like shit it's on mm -hmm. like that i mean dino like no hate but dino babers would not have been up on that couch that's fran brown right there. for you that is fran brown so that's yeah. when i knew it was different um get you were at ohio state now you're here what has been different about the training um i, I guess we're still early on we haven't mm -hmm. had camp or anything but what's yeah. been different about how you guys are preparing yeah i think at ohio state obviously there's uh, a deep culture and a lot of tradition that runs through that program. And so you get there and, you know, it's already a certain way and, and you have to, as a freshman, uh, become accustomed to that. Um, where I think this year so far, especially in the winter, uh, we were trying to build that. And I think just the, the identity of the team and, um, you know, what, what this team was about, we still had to, to build that. And I thought we did that. And I thought the, the winter was hard. Um, the trainings were tough. I mean, we were outside at 6 a.m. doing mat drills. So. Yo, once, I gotta tell the story too quickly. I was in the uh, Bird Library doing work up against one of the windows and I just see like 10 guys on the team run by all mm -hmm. face masks on. Yeah. You guys were running around the snow yeah. doing like a scavenger hunt yeah. or something. Yeah, it's well, crazy. while it was snowing. Yeah, yeah. so uh, just stuff like that, I think it has made us stronger. And I think we're still not where we need to be. Um, but we're ahead of schedule than where I thought we'd be, where I anticipated yeah. us. So, um, we're on the right track. And, and like I said, I thought the, the winter being tough was, was really good for us. Do you think that stuff Fran's taking from Georgia or is it his own stuff or is he putting a twist on it? What do yeah. you, what do you think? I think he's definitely, uh, taken some stuff from Georgia. Obviously they had a, a ton of success while he was there winning, um, national championship and being at the top of the sec, uh, while he was there. Uh, but at the same time, I think he's implementing his own stuff um 
and, and so he always talks about dart um so that, that's kind of been uh the the motto that, that we've been going by and i think everybody's been buying in and, and so now uh just seeing the change from day one the, the first week of workouts in january to now i, I really feel like we're in a good spot yeah Dart, by the way, what they're doing on social media, like shout out the Syracuse social media team. They're on fire. Crazy, bro. They're on fire. It's really, and like over the last couple of years, it's like really elevated. I've yeah. seen it all, dude. I've seen, I've been here for, like I said, four years. Mm -hmm. We had one Sweet 16 basketball team. Football, it's been the same story every year yeah. where win five or six games to start the year and then it's yeah. kind of just a, it's ugly. Um, this year, schedule. Mm-hmm. It's not too bad. Not too bad. Not we don't want to give anyone bullet, bulletin board material, yeah. but it's not too bad. I'm excited personally for one. Mm -hmm. My buddy is the quarterback at UNLV. We picked up the UNLV yeah. game, so yeah. away. So you best believe <laughs> I'll be out there having a good time. Um, I think we got like a four or five day trip planned. But out of all, I guess the games this year, are there any that you're looking forward to um, more than any others? Uh, I would just say that first one. Um, obviously bad taste in, in my mouth from last year and so i think i'm just excited to, to get out there and um you know put on the new jersey and be in the dome for the first time i think that environment and that as atmosphere yeah it's gonna be crazy um so i'm excited for that first one and um you know hopefully winning that and uh, get some momentum rolling so you haven't been to varsity i'm coming back to this i'm gonna rip off some places you tell me if you've been there before have you been you've been to dino yeah dino barbecue yeah. dino barbecue is good um where have you been on Marshall Street? I We met in School Yard Bagels. First yeah, time we met. that's one. And then I think Chipotle one time. Dude, too. okay. Just, I gotta, I gotta talk my shit on this for a second. <laughs> the Chipotle on Marshall Street is, in my opinion, the worst Chipotle well, in the entire I, I country. Went, I went there when I first got here in January and I told a few of the guys on the team, yeah. they're like, dude, you're crazy. Yeah. You're crazy. Like, uh, Justin Barron, um, yeah, well, Baron would not like that spot. He, he told me that he would rather drive 30 minutes away for yeah. a different Chipotle. Yeah. I do that every day. I go to Erie Boulevard because yeah. I'm not. Dude, yeah. That Chipotle is bad. A uh, couple. I'll give you a couple kind of tips that I found. Places, good places. I don't know. You drink coffee? Mm -hmm. Veteran Center? Mm -hmm. And this is to everyone because I'm about to put this on. They have a uh, Starbucks in the Veteran Center that no one knows about. So if you need to get your coffee in the morning, no game. lines. Dude, in, Free game. out. Second, pokey fish. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you like sushi, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hunter's laughing behind the camera because he just ate it. Um, Fire. Pokey fish, slept on. Very good. Um, and then varsity, bro. We got to, I got to get you into varsity. You're, like, you're fixated on that. No, I'm you're just, I can't believe that. Like when Dan told me that, I was like, what are you talking about? Like how, <laughs> especially because he's been here for a while. So I, it's I a little bit different. Yeah. Um, uh, Mount Rushmore of wide receivers you've played with. Top four. Marvin, Garrett Wilson, Emeka Abuka. And this last one is tough. It's a toss up between Chris Olave and Jackson Smith and Jigba. It's not a bad duo. Um, hmm. I would, damn, it's tough. So I would, all right, I'll give it to Chris because yep. I threw him my first touchdown pass in college. You got that ball somewhere? No, I don't. No. Yeah. That'd be a cool one to have. It's long yeah. gone. We'll get you your first Syracuse one. I need it. Yeah. Keep that. Um, yeah. <laughs> football, I don't know. Here, football, what I'm excited for for you mm -hmm. is that Syracuse football, like the history behind it. And this is when Fran came. He was talking about this in his press conference, just about how just historical it is here with guys like Ernie Davis and Jim Brown mm -hmm. and like the legacy behind everything. And I think over the last. 10 15 years that's kind of fallen off and yeah. i i said this before but like people here are just so excited and i think i mean at the end of the day it's going to come down to if you guys deliver on the field but yeah. assuming you do especially you bro you just got here like yeah. the community is going to eat it up 100%. and that's yeah. what i'm excited for um guys in the team right now who are a couple people that like maybe haven't been put on the radar yet that you think are gonna have big years yeah so i think obviously everybody knows about og um i think dan's gonna have a, a good year as well um zed haynes uh from georgia dog jackson dog. meeks dog yeah. um and i think there's gonna be a few other receivers that really step up um trevor pena has been making plays uh in spring ball and then 
I think guys on the defense, the the one thing that they've been doing a really good job of is just playing as a unit. Um, I think they've been communicating really well and they're playing tough. Um, so I think the whole defensive units will be playing well. But uh, those guys that I named, I'm excited to, to get on the field and, and sling it to them. I'm excited to watch. I, I was looking at season ticket packages yesterday. I'm actually going to I'm gonna ask you this. How much do you think the entry level for Syracuse football season tickets is? Well, we got seven home games this yeah. year. I was blown away by this when I saw it. Season just like the lowest price you can lowest get in price. for him. Uh, I don't know what that, that market's. I'll, I'd probably yeah. say like three fifty, four hundred. Yeah, that's what I thought it would be too. Yeah. Ninety nine bucks. Really? Ninety nine bucks. I'm about. I'm gonna be sitting first row, fifty yeah. yard line, Jeez. like watching all these games. I but I I literally put my deposit in yesterday because smart. I'm not a student anymore, so I got to give my smart. tickets. Um, but anyways, that's all I got. I appreciate you coming on yes, and sir. talking. Um. 420 football game spring yep. game you guys got to show out make sure you're there um i'm excited to see what you do in the field bro it's yes, gonna be sir. a good year let's do it yes sir